that the blood supply to the brains was a little shared. Now, if you imagine a complex, I don't know, telephone exchange, lots of different shared lines jumbled together, and you need to separate out two buildings. You, know, you can imagine how complex that can be. And what we were able to do using 3D imaging, and here 3D printing, we actually modeled the blood vessels. And then rather laboriously marked out the key blood vessels that belonged to each baby to say to the surgeons, look, cut here, move this, and actually, when it comes to it, create a net that allowed this skull to be, the skull for each child to be brought back in on itself to create two skulls from this one conjoined object. So, you know, what have we done there? Have we made it possible to treat the, the child? No, I mean, you know, the surgeon's brilliant. But what we've done is we've speeded up the process in a procedure where actually time is of the essence and where uh, many operations uh, were needed. So, you know, 3D printing. Is it going to get rid of the hardware store? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Is it going to get rid of Amazon? Are we going to be making what we need in our homes? I mean, it's, it's kind of dull. Think about your home. Name one object in your home that is made of just one material, that has gone through just one process. Can you think of one? It's hard, isn't it? A spoon. Yeah, okay. If you 3D printed a spoon, even, okay, if it was a plastic spoon, even the cheapest form of 3D printing would cost more than an injection molded spoon. So if we're going to play the spoon game, <laughs> what kind of spoon would you 3D print? Well, to me, it would be a spoon printed by a child with their name on it. And why would you do such a thing? To train the child to use 3D software and to use a 3D printer. I can't think of any other reason particularly, but you might want a particular kind of plastic spoon that fitted into your 